I'm a firm believer that having a great holiday is less about having the right car and caravan and more about going to the right places with the right people. I picked up this 300 pound eldest behind us as a basis for some project work and managed to get it back on its feet with a few days and weekends spent with the spanners out. At the same time I was offered a little Volvo which had failed the MOT and needed a bit of love to get it back on its feet, which it did, and I had a basis of a good caravanning outfit for about 600 quid. All I needed was somewhere to go. At the time I was reading a book called In Search of Ireland by H.V. Morton and the passages about the rugged west coast were really evocative and really got me going and I thought I need to go there. So I used this outfit as the basis of that trip and this is how we got on. With a surname like Donnelly, I always suspected that me and Ireland would get on well, and so it proved in our tour. Having crossed the Irish Sea from Holyhead, we took the chance to see the sights of Dublin before making the trek across country to the western coast and the start of our tour. Morton paints a vivid picture of the Connemara landscape. Behind the grey land, moving round in a solemn dance as you go over the twisting road, are blue hills. Hills blue as the sea at Capri, with the biggest and the most golden clouds on earth like halos over their heads. Among the blue hills and the grey fields and beside the blue waters of little locks and on the edges of sudden peat bogs stand small cabins, incredibly poor and marvellously white. And when the sun goes down, this place is as grey as a ghost. Connemara. The roads here aren't always fast, so don't try to cover too large a distance in one go. But as soon as you leave behind the most popular tourist areas, you'll begin to discover the real island. The Connemara National Park itself is staggering in its scale and its beauty, but it isn't hard to see why this part of the country is so sparsely populated. The countryside is deeply inhospitable, with boggy ground and craggy rocks making life hard for farmers, but it's a dream for visitors with a penchant for landscape photography framed by the brooding mountain ranges of the Frilly Coast in the west and Loch Currib in the east. It's a bit like the Lake District, but without the tourists. Everywhere you stop for a picnic affords spectacular views over the landscape. If you haven't travelled to Ireland before, you'll find it feels more like a foreign country than you might expect, what with its Euros, kilometres and Gaelic signposting. And you'll have to get used to the bumpy roads too, which aren't kind to caravans. They did our best to shake our Eldis and our Volvo to pieces, but they held together basically, although we did have to restock the cupboards of an evening. We had a great time enjoying the landmarks such as the Burren's eerie limestone pavements and the beautiful little lighthouses along the way. Despite County Galway's best attempt, our outfit survived the trip remarkably intact, proving that with a bit of luck, you can really tour air on a shoestring. We'd enjoyed a fabulous tour of this beautiful country, one that I fell in love with just as H.V. Morton had done before me. <laughs>